Yo, what's good? We back with CT's RPT, Real Prison Talk with Wes. And today, I ain't even gonna hold you. The shit that I'm about to get off my chest today might make some people feel some type of way. I'm gonna try my best to clarify everything that I say so that there's no lines blurred. But today I wanna talk about something that's I really have a problem with. And that's these dudes in jail, undercover dudes in jail, messing with these men and then come home and mess with our females. Now, I said it, I'm about to ruffle, I'm about to ruffle some feathers because we live in a world where everybody is so sensitive and you can't really say this about uh, gays or bisexuals and it's almost hard to voice your opinion as a straight man about how you feel without being looked at like I did, like I'm saying something wrong when I'm just voicing my opinion. So first off, let me put out, I have no problem with gays. I'm not homophobic. You are who you are. You're attracted to who you're attracted to. Your business is your business. That is not my issue. My issue is the people that's on the fence. Now, this came about because there was a dude right here in this halfway house that I'm in right now. He's no longer here. He did something stupid, but... I was in prison with him and there's men, we're in a men's facility. Ain't no woman in, in, in locked up in this facility with us. So the men that's in there, there's men in there with boobs, like taking whatever uh, hormones, pills they're taking to make their, their, their breasts, to give them breasts. And there's dudes that I guess that's attracted to that type of man. So this kid, he was in a full-blown relationship with this man or woman, whatever this person identifies himself as, him or herself as. I'm definitely, I'm not, I'm definitely don't mean no disrespect to nobody. My opinion is my opinion. I'm entitled to it. But the kid that was here at the halfway house, he was in a full-on relationship with this person. And he comes here, and I stay to myself, you know. I got a pretty good job. I go to work, come home, take my stuff off. This is my workout clothes right here. I get... My workout clothes, I go downstairs, hit the weight room for about an hour, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Then I take my shower and I go to bed, get ready for the next day. I stay to myself. So when this kid came, he running around with dudes like he's some type of gangster. He knows that I know. So he kind of like tried to stay away from me. And I ain't one of them dudes that's going to be running around telling everybody, oh, he was in jail doing this, or that's that man business, you know what I mean? The most I asked, I asked the director here not to put him in the room with me because I didn't want to live with him. That's the most I did. I don't condone the things that he do. Now, like I said, I'm not homophobic. So I respect a person that has their mind made up. 
<clears throat> I have respect a person that say, I'm gay. I'm a man that uh, that's attracted to other men. I, that's that's your thing. That's your thing. I'm gay. I'm a woman. That's I, I, I was born a, a female, but I'm attracted to other females. That's your thing. That's your thing. Even those that's bisexual. Your thing is your thing. But what I don't respect is these down low brothers that's in jail messing with these sick men. And, and I don't mean sick in the head, even though my personal opinion is my personal opinion. You know what I mean? I used to feel I used to, I feel like there is a chemical imbalance that's a little off. But as when I say sick, these sick men, I mean when they call med call, these dudes are the majority of the, the line. The line is is the transgender dudes. And you sleeping with them. And then you come home. And you don't want the streets to know. You just. you, What they call undercover brother. So now you come home. And you. Sleep. You from you went from sleeping with these sick men. Unprotected in jail. Because ain't no condoms in jail. So you went from sleeping with these sick men. Unprotected. Now you come home. And you infecting. Our woman, our sisters, that don't know no better. And it wouldn't be right. It's not in my character. I wouldn't be, I'm not the type of sucker to walk around and talk about another. Oh, he was in jail doing this. Oh, he was doing that. You know, I don't do that. It's a couple of my homies that's in here. And on another level. If you pick if you picked up a, the gang lifestyle and you chose to be a gang member, then you know the rules. So we ain't gotta go through that on, on camera. So it's a couple of my homies in here that I put on about homie. Like listen, we call them red dragons in, in my culture. So yo, 550 a red dragon. That I basically was saying that the dude was fraternizing with transgenders and He's trying to portray like he wasn't. I don't respect the undercover brother. So please don't get it twisted. And because this gay community, I don't want y'all coming after me saying, oh, Wes is against gays. That's not the case. Don't get it twisted. I have no problem with what you are because the majority of you out there in the gay community has made a choice. You've picked the side. Even if your side is I'm bi, curious, whatever it's called, you pick the side. You ain't trying to do nothing undercover. You don't want nobody to know about it. Down low brother type crap. That's what I don't respect. I don't respect the dude that's hiding up behind it. Because then you go and you infect our sisters. And when she done with you, guess who she go sleep with? One of my brothers. Or go sleep with somebody that one of my brothers is is going to end up getting it somehow. It's a circle, you know. She sleep with somebody. That person sleep with somebody. And one of my brothers sleep with that person. But eventually it gets around, you know. And like I said, a lot of these dudes, a lot of these transgenders, and because they don't have condoms in jail. So there's diseases floating around. There, I thought this was a myth. When I first came to jail, everybody was telling me about this dude named Gorgeous George. So, oh, Gorgeous George, he knocked dudes, he'll knock you out and then suck you off, give you head. I guess it's called fellatio. What is that the term for when you're doing it to a woman? Well, you get the gist, you know what I mean? I'm trying to be as respectful and as I can, you know what I mean, and use the right words. Because my mama be watching these videos. <laughs> but Gorgeous George was a big diesel dude. Used to knock little white boys out and then sexually please them <clears throat> while they was knocked out. And he said that semen was protein. And he needed it for his muscles. He was gay and that was his excuse 
for doing what he do. But he was attracted to white boys, so I heard. I thought it was a myth. I'm like, I keep hearing about this gorgeous George dude. Never seen him. I've been in jail. I don't, I don't gave nearly a decade of my life to the prison system. Where's this, where's this gorgeous George do that? 2009 or 10, I ran across him, the gorgeous George. But he wasn't the gorgeous George that everybody was talking about. This big diesel dude that everybody was saying, gorgeous George. Because I kept saying to myself, gorgeous George is going to have to kill me if he think he going to do something to me. Just knocking me out ain't going to do it. Because when I get up, I'm going to go get my knife. But that's what a lot of the dudes that, like, only a lot of old school dudes know him. They're like, nah, he attracted to the young white boys. But when I finally seen him, gorgeous George was thin, thick, thin as a toothpick. And if he's not dead right now, he's dying of AIDS. AIDS is a real thing. HIV is a real thing. I lost my sister to it. And maybe that's why it's such a sensitive subject to me. But these guys are in jail and they're sick. Because they're fraternizing with each other. Unprotected. They don't sell condoms on commissary. Because you ain't supposed to be in there doing nothing that you need a condom for. So this nasty individual was in there doing stuff that he needed a condom for, but without a condom. And now he's running around these streets. He's, he, he gets home. And I used to sit in the TV room sometimes. Like I said, I stay away from dudes. But I see, you know what I mean? And I watch his moves. And like I said, I told a couple of my homies, stay away from that dude right there. I sit there and watch him in the TV room. He on, got him a little phone and jumped on all these Dating sites, he POFing and meet me's and all these other dating sites. I don't really even know a lot of them. But these kids in this house know him. I don't really do them. These kids in the house do them. And he got these girls coming to see him. And I'm just shaking my head like, they don't even know. For all I know, he might be sick. I know the, 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 the gentleman that he was in a relationship with. He was in a full-blown relationship with this man. They, was, they moved into the cell together. I'm talking about walking around the yard. They walking around the yard holding hands together. And now he, he walking around here with his pants sagging like he's some type of gangster. He got low size on him, so he walk around here diddy bopping like he's some type of gangster. And he's tricking all these young girls that don't know that he's gay or bisexual or whatever it is. And whatever he probably caught from that man, He's infecting our sisters, our black and our Caucasian and Latino sisters. And it just comes back around. And I'm sick to my stomach with it, you know. And on that note, I'm going to end this, man, before I say something that I'm going to mess around and regret. If you haven't, hit the subscribe button by now. Subscribe to my channel. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at wes.smith.129. Um, I hope I didn't offend anybody. I don't mean no disrespect to anybody or what they are. Until next time, peace.